What up, guys? Carolina Jackpot coming at you. It's Wednesday evening, September 2nd, about 8.15 p.m. And I'm going to talk about <laughs> exactly what I talked about in the description of this video or the title of it. Now, I'm not going to talk about 2020 and me being sick of these things, okay, of these things. Just so you know, I am a pair of panties. That's a mask. Now, I'm going to talk about being sick of social distancing. That's not another. I am sick and tired of these football players crapping on their team, man. I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this bullshit. It's ridiculous. Today, I, I get it in. Jamie Newman. Quarterback at Georgia. Well, was he quarterback? He was never a quarterback at Georgia. Why? Because you come in there this year as a grad transfer. Uh, you go through, I, I guess, whatever semblance of spring practice they had, right, where they have a day or two of it. Uh, you're a member of the team. You're presumed to be the starting quarterback. You're in uh, practice for the season, which kicks off in, what, three weeks, thereabout, give or take, three and a half weeks uh, against Arkansas for your team, uh, different teams for all the other SEC uh, juggernauts. And now today, all of a sudden, I get uh, the news about 2.30 or so that uh, you have decided to join the masses who have bitched out of the 2020 season. Yeah, that's right. You bitched out, dude. You bitched out. I talked about this the other week on a video. Is it a smart idea? Was it not? At the time... There weren't as many players doing this. Now, hell, it seems like we got more players opting out in the past week and a half uh, to week than we've had the whole damn time they were able to do it. You know, somebody should have put a a uh, a limit on this. Somebody should have put a time frame on it and said, hey, if you ain't opted out by uh, August the 20th, you can't do it. Or we're going to yank your freaking scholarship. And I firmly believe that. You know, not just because there's a coronavirus doesn't mean that these people can't be held accountable for something. Last night, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers of all, Uncle Lou, uh, talking about Will Muschamp. And, and not just Will Muschamp, talking about any college football coach on hot seats. Everybody gets a pass this year. Everybody gets a pass because there's a lot, there's too many built in excuses. That's right. There's too many built-in excuses, and we're going to accept every single damn one of them. We're going to accept every single one of them. Okay, this guy opted out. Well, uh, we played this team over here, and uh, we didn't have any fans, so uh, I didn't have an advantage here. Blah, blah, blah. I can just see the excuses coming now. But these players, there is no excuse, man. There's no excuse in my opinion. Uh, I don't care that you're getting ready for the NFL draft. It's one thing that they're opting out, they're, excuse me, bitching out of bowl games, which I think is complete, total horseshit. Uh, if you are part of that team, you're obligated to play in every game that that team participates in because guess what? They gave you a scholarship. They gave you a scholarly. Uh, they helped you. They coached you up. They fed you. They schooled you for how many years? So you have an obligation, in my eyes, to play every single game that is on the docket. And that includes bowl games. I don't care if you're going to the NFL next year. It doesn't give you a right to bitch out on your teammates. It doesn't it, – it's not fair to the college football fan. We don't get to see the best product out there on the field. We don't get to see the best product. You know, case in point, Debo Samuel, who bitched out of the uh, – what what you call it? Belt Bowl a couple of years ago against University of Virginia. We don't know how that game would have turned out had he played in it. Would we have lost? Probably so. Would it have been a more exciting game? Definitely so. And I can I, uh, Michigan players bitching out uh, a couple of years ago against Florida got blown out. How how would that thing? Uh, Rashawn Gary, I think one of them. I mean, how different would that game have been if they, had they not done that? And now you're talking about a whole season. Jamie Newman. I mean, why did you even come here? And moreover than that, why are they even why are they recruiting this guy and they are, are bringing him into the fold? And this is something I don't understand about college football teams. Uh, maybe someone can help me understand this. Maybe I'm just a simpleton. It seems to me that Georgia is one of those, those college football teams that's – go away. Kind of – in some ways, on offense, a lot like South Carolina. 
Now, I'm not saying Georgia has the same talent as South Carolina. I'm not saying that they're not infinitely better than South Carolina. All right, that's not what I'm saying. But it seems like, to me, the philosophies are about the same, and they're a little bit screwed up in that there is no real philosophy. You don't have an identity. You don't have an identity uh, on offense from one year or the other. You're bringing Jamie Newman in there, a dual-threat quarterback, and then you're also bringing in uh, this JT Daniels guy who is uh, a pocket passer, more pro-style type quarterback. So I, I don't get it. Do, do they want to do this? Do, I mean, do you do, – do, do these teams – tailor their offensive scheme around the skill set of the quarterback that they're uh, hanging their hat on, or are they bringing in quarterbacks to fit their system? To me, it's like they're trying to – a lot of them are trying to hang their hat on, uh, you know, the quarterback's skill set, and that's kind of difficult to do because everybody else – I mean, you have, have receivers who have to – they have to block differently. they got to run different kind of routes. They've got different assignments. You've got offensive linemen who are going to have different assignments who are going to have to block differently in the whole nine yards. Uh, and I understand you want a little bit of variety to your offense to kind of throw off uh, the opposition. I get that. Uh, you want to really be able to take the top off of defense, as Uncle Lou says, uh, at, you know, the drop of a hat when they're least expecting it. But I don't get why uh, we, you know, just all of a sudden, it, it seems like it didn't make any sense to me why they recruited Justin Fields to the University of Georgia if they weren't going to mold their offense around him. And it seemed to me like, unfortunately, he came in a year too early for them, if that makes any sense. Because I believe if he had been a, one year younger that uh, he would have come in – and that Jake Fromm would have pushed on out, and uh, you would have seen him uh, be a star there. And, and I don't know. I, I really don't know. That, that's hindsight's 2020. But this, this kid at LSU, this defensive lineman, the Shelvin kid who bitched out this week, uh, Jamar Chase who bitched out, that's really, I mean, just, that's piss poor. And I'm not trying to be. Uh, unsympathetic to the coronavirus stuff, because some of them, I mean, might legit be scared. But you know what? you got to stop being scared. I go to work every day. I ain't legit scared to be going out here. I work amongst people all day long, all day long. I ain't legit scared to be running around and, 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 and serving them and being – I'm not a server, by the way. I'm, I, run a, I run a place, but <laughs> – you know, you know, same thing. I'm not afraid to to do my job. You can't live scared. And I don't believe that any of these guys are concerned about the damn virus. Uh, we had a couple of them at South Carolina to do it. And the reason behind that, I'm really not sure. I'm not going to say they bitched out kind of like some of these guys are because they opted out a lot earlier. Um and, and a lot, there were a lot more unknowns at the time. The numbers weren't falling a little bit. They're falling out here in the mainstream world. Now, in, on college campuses, I mean, they're inflating like a balloon because people, they can't, they can't wear these stinking things like they're supposed to. They can't stay away from each other like they're supposed to. They can't use common sense. And that, that doesn't – don't – Confuse that with me saying, you know, I'm not scared to go out in public and I'm not scared to do this and that and work in this and that. And then I'm talking about, you know, not wearing a mask. I said, well, if you say you're not scared, do you wear a mask? Yes, I do. I wear my mask when I'm supposed to and I socially distance. But these kids aren't doing that. And they don't have the discipline to do that. And they think they're, you know, 10 feet tall and bulletproof because uh, they're in college. Uh, well, a lot of them are learning uh, less than the hard way uh, from what I understand. But I don't agree with these players bitching out and them doing it at the last minute. Is That's even more piss poor. It really is. I mean, you're letting down your teammates. Uh, you're letting down the university. And the more, most of all, you're letting down the fans like me. A fan like me, I mean, I, I wanted to see Jamie Newman play for Georgia. I wanted to see what that might look like. You know, just because y'all can sit here and say, well, you, know, you better be glad that he didn't. Yeah, he opted out, Coop, because that's going to mean the curb stomping y'all go get might be a little bit less tense. No, I ain't worried about that. Would he curb stomp us? Maybe, but 
mm, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> they haven't done a whole heck of a great job at curb stomping us the past, uh, past few years of history there, uh, except for that one time. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Steve Spurrier. Um, yeah, you know, I wanted to see him play because I'm a college football fan. I want to see Jamar Chase play. Uh, this guy, the, some of the catches he made last year, uh, some of it was just incredible. I wanted to see what he did with a new quarterback out there. I wanted to see him out there uh, and, and offense tailored around him, and, you know, at LSU and what they could do. But we're not going to get to see it this year, guys. We're all going to be deprived of that. Uh, I was doing a breakdown on our podcast the other night, and, you know, I had to sit here and I was going through my magazine, kind of trying to line some of these teams up, lining first team ACC players up. And you had to look, and I had to refer back to my notes that I made that video about all the players who had bitched out. And I listed them all and talked about it. And you, I had to look back up through all this to kind of figure out who I was going to rank, uh, you know, first through 15th in the ACC. And uh, things look drastically different than they would have uh, had we had some of these individuals uh, out there on the field instead of, you know, uh, being prima donnas and, you know, just deciding that uh, I'm, I'm bigger than this game, so I don't have to play it. Uh, I think it's crappy, guys. I think it's a big pile of shit, and um, it puts a huge damper on this season. It's going to put a huge asterisk beside everything, and still, though, you're just like me. I'm glad to see college football coming back. I mean, I don't care what kind of reform it's in. It almost feels like uh, one of those strike seasons and we got a bunch of freaking replacements out there uh, like they had in the NFL years back. But let me know what your thoughts are on it. I'll see y'all later. Peru wrote it. Poof. I'm out. Go Gamecocks, baby. Spurs up to my toes up. Fire coach, ba 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 boom, woo ah ah ah.